So good morning sir, I am here to discuss about the staircase in the subject C40 quantity surveying lecture. And by the way, I am James Andrew Imodiculia from BS Civil Engineering 3B. So staircase. Staircase construction in buildings greatly requires the technicality and the expertise needed in the field of craftsmanship and carpentry. Stairs, which serves as an important function of connecting two different points separated by different elevations, must be designed and constructed carefully to ensure that the safety of the users is put in mind. So in designing staircases, sir, in designing staircases, it is important to put in mind the design and how you design the staircase because it must be safe for the users in order to minimize the chances of people falling down and getting injured. So I am here to discuss the terms related to stairs. stairs. So first is the baluster. Baluster is a small post that is responsible for supporting the handrails or a coping. As you can see here in the picture that are, these are examples of balusters. So balustrade. A balustrade is a series or row of balusters joined by a handrail or a coping as the parapet of a balcony. So balustrade by simply is an array of balusters that is held together by a handrail. So next is barriers. Barriers are structures that support for winders, winders wedge into the wall secured by a stringer. So as you can see in the figure, there is the barrier. Next, carriage. The carriage is the portion that supports the steps of a wooden stair as illustrated in the image above. Next is closed string. A closed string is a stair without an open well in the dog stairs. So in the image you can see that that this component labeled as closed string. So that's, that's what it looks like. Next, cocktail stair. It is a general term given to a winding staircase. Next, circular stair. It is a staircase with steps winding in a circle or cylinder. So, circular stair as well as elliptical stair are generally termed as cocktail stair. So, elliptical stair are elliptical in the plan wherein each thread assembly converges in an elliptical ring in a plan. So, in the image, you can see an example of an elliptical stair. So, next, the flight of stairs is a series of steps leading from one landing to another. So this portion here, one, this one here is a flight and this one here is a flight. So it's basically uh, the steps from landing to landing. Next, the front string. The front string is the string on the side of the stairs where the handrail is placed. So here, this is the front string. You can see it in the illustration. Next is flyers. These are the steps in a flight that are par parallel with each other. So in this example or illustration, these two steps are considered as flyers. These two steps are considered as flyers. So it's basically the steps in the flight that are parallel with one another. Next is geometrical stairs. It is a flight of a stair which is supported by a wall at the end of the steps. So here in the example, this the inner line of the stair is supported by handrail or railing. However, the other side is supported by a wall, so that is what a geometrical stair is. Next is half space. So half space is the interval between two flights of a steps in a staircase. So it is here. This is an example of a half step stair. Next is a handrail. So this is a rail that turns parallel with the inclination of the stair that holds the balusters. So this entire structure here is the handrail. It is consisted of the Or this one here is the handrail, but sometimes it is this whole structure in the side where the users hold on to is termed as the handrail. So hollow new wheel. It is an opening in the middle of the staircase as distinguished from solid new wheel wherein the ends of steps are attached. So this one here, the, the post that the stairs that starts in is called a new wheel. A hollow new wheel is a variation of the new wheel that has an hollowed out inside. Next is housing. It is the notches in the stringboard of a staircase for the reception of stairs. So the housing is the one that the steps are attached into. Basically grooves on the string that the stairs attach into. 
So the knee is the convex bend at the back of a handrail. So under the handrail, there is a convex vent that accommodates the attachment of balusters. So that one is called a knee. So the landing, this is the horizontal floor space which acts as a resting place in a flight. So in it is clearly illustrated here in the drawing what a landing is. So this one here is the landing. Next, the new wheel. New wheel is this is the center column where the steps of a circular staircase wind. So this one here is a new wheel. It's basically the post that is at the start of a staircase where the beginning of the handrail is attached to. So nosing. This is the front edge of the step that project beyond the riser. So the nosing here, this one here. So this is the riser. The part of the step that protrudes that protrudes through the riser is called the nosing. So the pitch, it is the angle of inclination of the horizontal of the stairs. So the pitch is the angle that the stair forms with the floor. So the angle between the stair and the floor is called the pitch. Next, ramp. It is a sloped surface that rises and twists simultaneously. So here you can see a stair and the ramp. Here is a sloped surface that twists to accommodate wheels or wheeled vehicles or wheeled maneuvers. So the rise. This is the height of a flight of stairs from landing to landing or the height between successive treads of stairs. So it is illustrated here in the illustration that the, the vertical part of the stair or each step is called the rise and the run, the horizontal dis distance from the first to the last riser of a stair flight. So the horizontal aspect or part of a step is called the run while the vertical part is called the rise. Span drill. This is the angle formed by a stairway or the, the structure that su supports the stairway. So here, it, this is the span drill. So it is commonly confused with pitch. The pitch is the angle. The span drill is the structure that supports. So staircase. It is the whole set of stairs. It is the structure that contains a flight of stairs. So staircase is the whole term for all of these parts when it is constructed together. It serves as a medium for transport between two different floors with def different elevations. Next is stair builder struts. These are cross beams that support the landing of a stair. So here, in this, for example, this figure, there is a landing here in th this part, and the beams that support it underneath are called the stair builder struts. Next is a stair head. This is the initial stair at the top of a flight of stair or staircase. Next, the stair head room. It is the vertical height measured from the nosing of a stair tread to any overhead obstruction. So this one labeled as minimum headroom. This is the what means by stair headroom. Next, the stairwell. This is the vertical shaft that contains the staircase. So for example, in this photo of a staircase, this whole rectangular portion that the stairs are attached to is called the stairwell. Next, a step. This is a kind of stair that is consisted of only one tread and one riser. Next, steps. This is the assembly which consists of a tread and a riser. So, it is this one here are the steps, this structure here. Next is the string. This is a part of the flight of a stair which forms its ceiling or sophie. It is labeled here, this one here is the strings. It's basically the structure that the steps are attached into. So other terms related to stairs are Sufi. It is the underneath of an arc or molding. String board. It is the board next to the wall hole which receives the end of the steps. The tread width. It is the dimension of a tread plus the projection of the nosing. Well hole. The opening in the floor at the top of the flight of stairs. Wrath. This is the hole of a helically curved handrail. Next, tread. It is the horizontal part of a step which includes the nosing. Next is tread run. It is the horizontal distance between two consecutive risers on or on an open riser stair. It is also defined as the horizontal distance between the nosings measured perpendicular to the front edges of the nosing or tread. Next is a well staircase. This is a type of a winding staircase, staircase enclosed by a wall which resembles a well. Next is tread length. 
It is the dimension of a tread measured perpendicular to the normal line of travel on a stair. Next is wall string. This is the board placed against a wall to receive the end of a step. Next is well. The space occupied by the flight of stairs are called is called well. well. Winders. These are steps that are not parallel with one another. So these terms are the terms that is that are related to stairs. So in discussing the stairs for the next topics, these terms provide knowledge so that you understand or we understand the discussions about the staircases more fluently and more importantly we easily understand the concepts and the calculations for the different types of staircases as well as their design. That would be all there, sir. Thank you. Laying out of stairs. In laying out of stairs, one has to consider the following methods. First, determine the clear height of the riser in meter. Normally, the rise per step is 17 cm to 18 cm. Second, divide the height of the rise by either 0.17 meter or 0.18 meter to determine the number of steps from the first to the second floor. Next, divide the run with the effective width of the thread as follows. With the width of thread for 0.25 meter, the effective width is 0.20 meter. For 0.30 meter, the effective width is 0.25 meter. The effective width of the thread is equal to the, to the width minus the nosing computed width at 0.05 meter. If the result found in step 3 is less than the number found in step 2, adjust the length of the run to obtain an equal distances and proportional steps. Next, the height of the riser should uniform from the first to the last step of the stair. Hence, there should be no fractional value in dividing the rise by the riser per step. However, if the fractional value could not be avoided in dividing the rise by the riser, adjust the fractional value in equal proportion to the number of risers, but in no case shall the riser per step be greater than 0.19 meter nor less than 0.17 meter. Otherwise, the stairs will not an ideal and comfortable one. So here's an illustration. Determine the number of steps and the height of the riser of a staircase. If the height of the rise is 2.2 meter using a 0.30 meter thread width. Solution. Number 1. The height of the rise is 2.2 meters. Next, assume that the riser per step is 0 0.17 meters. The rise over riser is equal to the number of risers. So 2.2 all over 0 0.17 is equal to 12.94. Number 3. The answer has a fractional value of 0 0.94 but the rule says there should be no fractional value in dividing the rise and the riser. Therefore, we have to adjust. Number 4. Divide the rise by the whole value of 12 disregarding the fractional value of 0 0.94. So 2.20 all over 12 is equal to 0 0.183 meter. Number 5. The 0 0.183 meter is now the height of the risers per step which is equivalent to 18.3 cm. This value is not more than 19 cm nor less than 17 cm. Hence, considered as ideal and comfortable. Number 6. Determine the distance of the run under the following formula. So the formula is run is equal to the number of steps minus 1 times the effective width of the thread. Where effective width is the thread width minus the nosing. And the nosing is equal to 5 cm or 0.05 m. To run is equal to the number of steps minus 1 times 0.25 meter which is 12 minus 1 times 0.25 meter so the run is equal to 2.75 meters illustration number 2 determine the height of the riser and the width of the thread when the rise is 2.65 meters 
under run is 2.75 meters. Solution Number 1. Assume that the riser height is 18 centimeter or 0 0.18 meter. Number 2. Divide the height of the rise by 0 0.18 meter. So 2.65 all over 0 0.18 is equal to 14.72 or shall we say 15 steps. Assuming that there are 15 steps instead of 14.72, determine the height of the riser. So 2.65 all over 0 0.15 is equal to 1.766 meter or 17.66 centimeter. This value is between 17 centimeter to 19 centimeter, which is acceptable. Number four, assume that the thread width is 30 centimeter or 0 0.3 meter. The effective width of the step is 0 0.30 minus 0 0.05, with a nosing of 0 0.25 meter. Number five, if there are 15 steps, multiply the effective width of the thread. So run is equal to number of steps minus 1 times 0 0.25. So 15 minus 1 times 0 0.25 which is equals to 3.5 meters. Note that 3.5 meters is longer than 2.75 meter distance of the run as specified in the problem. Hence adjustments of the thread width is necessary. Letter A. From step 4, assume the thread width to be 0 0.25 meter not 0 0.30 meter so the effective width is equals to 0 0.5 minus 0 0.05 no sin and the effective width is equals to 0 0.20 meters letter c trial multiplication number of steps times the effective width is equals to the run so 14 times 0 0.20 is equals to 2.80 meters this value is acceptable since the existing distance of the run is 2.75 meters. And that would be all. Thank you. Hi, this is Angelo Montes Claros reporting for the stairs. So my topic is about strangers. So first, stranger a stranger is the inclined plane that supports or holds the tread and riser of a stair. The length of the stranger is determined by the usage of the Pythagorean formula or by measuring it with a tape or ruler. The steel square is very useful in stairway framing and knowing its function will obtain satisfactory results. So there are four types of strangers. The first type is cut type strangers. They are popularly employed in most modern and contemporary house designs. So these pictures serve as an example of what kind or type these strangers are. The next one is cleated type stranger. It is used for a very rough Work. As you can see in the picture, you can see there are cleats. They are usually bolted or um, fixed with screws for stronger supports. The next one is the built-up type stranger. It is adopted on a wide staircase that requires a center strange stranger. The last one is the rabbited type stranger. It is adopted on a fine work and usually made at the mill. The risers and threads are held in the rabbits by wedge set in the glue. So the photo on the left side, as you can see, there are grooves there. So what people usually do is they put glue there for wood or for cement or for steel depending on the material you're using and it's um, designed perfectly to fit or a bit tight to hold it in place 
Here's an example of how to solve the strangers. So there's a, an example like the run distance is equal to 3.5 meters, height of the rise 2.5. So you use the formula stranger length is equal to square root of run squared plus rise squared. So you get 4.3. Then you convert it into feet or depends on you. And then you solve for the number of steps, assuming 8 cm riser length, height. Divide riser is equal, divide riser over riser is equal to 2.5 over 18. So it's 13.88, so you have to round up. So the next slide will show you the table so that you could solve the problem. Here. So next one is the stairs angle of inclination. The ladder is around 50 to 90 degrees. The ra a ramp is 1 to 20 degrees since the ramps are usually used for heavy loads or like for uh, like the ones in the hospital so that you could easily go up an elevation and the stairs are 20 to 50 degrees. The ideal stairs are 30 to 35 degrees since it's accessible for anyone like the age, aged or kids. So this is a table of the spiral stairs. As you can see there is a difference between the cantilever treads and open riser treads by its design. So engineers are tasked to, ah, uh, sorry, architects are tasked to design while the engineers compute how heavy or sturdy the stairs are. So this code specifies um, the standard of how a stair must be made so you can read it out loud or read it by yourself so I wouldn't annoy you <laughs> so you can pause the video and that's it so that is all thank you